Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us on this episode of The Roarcast, presented by Jag One Physical Therapy. Kyle Matrician, Mike Kowalski with you. Hope you have a nice cup of coffee. Get ready to enjoy a little s- swimming conversation. So we had members of the women's swimming team with us this week. Um, it was Claire Larson, Isabella Fertezzi, and Georgia Young. So you'll hear from them shortly. So let me welcome in my co-host, Kyle Matrician. How's Michael, your week? It's my weekend. My weekend was great. It will be great. <laughs> Slash, it was great. <laughs> what I did there? No, see what I did? Yeah, see what I did there? <laughs> um, no, but uh, thanks again for everybody for joining us. Those watching on Twitch right now on our Twitch stream, those who will be watching us on YouTube after the fact or listening to us on any of our other podcast channels, we hope you've been enjoying the season so far. We really think you're going to enjoy this episode. Uh, a lot of good personality with uh, the three members of the women's swimming and diving team that we had on today. Uh, some great stories. Really didn't even talk, they didn't talk like swimming competitively all that much. Really the stories that they had, uh, which we feel like makes for better content anyway, had more to do uh, with their personalities and, you know, in their lives outside of Columbia. So those interested in our swimming and diving team will definitely enjoy it. And we think those uh, who maybe are new and don't know too much about our women's swimming and diving team will get to know some of the personalities on the team. So we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to throw it right to a break right now. And when we come back, we'll be joined by three members of the women's swimming and diving program. for them we're here for you get back the life you love they say you play basketball you play football you play tennis but you can't play boxing you have to fight i remember the night where it went completely downhill it was a massive tumor that had wrapped itself around my spine dr hartle who was my surgeon you know he aced it they resurrected me on August 9, 2014, I became the WBA middleweight champion of the world. All right, welcome back to the Roarcast presented by Jag One Physical Therapy. We are joined by three guests from the Columbia Women's Swimming and Diving Team. We have Isabella Fertesi joining us, a sophomore from Arizona. We have Claire Larson, a junior from California. And we also have Georgia Young, a freshman from California. So thank you very much to the three of you for joining us. How is the weather out on the West Coast? Nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, I'm going to guess warmer than in the Northeast. Yes, quite sunny. Are you all on the West Coast right now or are any of you in the Northeast? I am in the Southeast. I'm actually currently in Florida swimming here. Oh. So. Oh, very nice. Do you have yeah. a family out there? Are you living with teammates? Actually, um, I'm living with one other Columbia swimmer and three swimmers from Yale. Oh, that's cool. Wow. That's, a little, yeah, that's, that's a first, I think, for <laughs> us. <laughs> so you guys all know each other from before college. The, obviously, you and your teammate know each other because you're on Columbia together. But what about the swimmers from Yale? Do you know each other before or just from college? You guys um, know yeah. that friendship? Um, so we um, actually all trained here last semester as well. Claire Larson was a special sure guest star. Oh, <laughs> nice. Um, so we were here last semester and we got to know the girls really well and it was so much fun. We had to come back. Very nice. Very cool. Well, we do want to, before we get too deep into a conversation, we want the three of you, since this is our first time having, you know, women swimming and diving on the broadcast, we want the three of you to kind of introduce yourselves to our listeners, uh, let everybody know a little bit more about who you are. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So Isabella, why don't you start? Um, yeah, so I'm Isabella. I'm a sophomore on the swim team. I swim breaststroke and I am um, currently studying creative writing at Columbia College. Really happy to be here. Uh, my name is Claire Larson. I'm a junior um, at Columbia College as well. I'm captain on the team um, and I'm studying political science and visual arts. And I'm a sprint freestyler. And Georgia. Hi, I'm Georgia. I'm a freshman at Columbia College, and I think I'm going to be studying political science. 
already knows. Yeah, I saw. Freshman. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So one thing I wanted to ask before we get too deep in everything, how do you, when do you figure out what strokes you're going to specialize in? I think I'm curious about that. We kind of talked about that with fencers on another episode. When do you decide what weapon it is? And they, they, their answer was it, it chooses you. So is it similar for you guys or um, how does that all work? Oh, absolutely. Um, I was born a backstroker really good when I was five. Um, I thought you said born a backstroker. Like she just came out that way. <laughs> yeah, that's, absolutely. <laughs> the, doctors, the doctors told their mother, backstroke. Oh, yeah. That's exactly how it went. Um, then I surprised everyone, became a breaststroker, and definitely had to be stuck with that. Just the way it is. <laughs> Yeah, I think for a lot of us, um, it kind of happens pretty early. You kind of, you stick on a stroke and then you keep training it until someone tells you to do otherwise. And that's, that's your stroke. Um, also, it depends on your body type. Like I'm really tall. Um, and so that makes me a freestyler. Like if I wanted to do fly, there's no way. <laughs> I'm not a good one. You, you need the shoulders. <laughs> Don't you need the shoulders to do fly? Like, I feel you need like the that's... shoulders to do everything. Oh, yeah. I guess everything, but, <laughs> but when I, I swam, I was by no means a, a competitive swimmer. But in high school, I swam a little bit and the, the fly, it just killed. I mean, the shoulders. I, I don't know how. Does anybody, Georgia, you don't do fly, do you? Um, I actually, I do swim fly. Oh, there we I, go. <laughs> I feel like I've had a little bit of a different experience. I've swum so many different strokes because in age group swimming, you don't really get it. Like you get thrown into an event and your coach tells you what to swim and you do it, but you definitely specialize more in college. Yeah, that's very true. Like in college you have, because you, you only train, you only, um, swim three events at your championship meet, you generally train for those three events only. So if you know, for me, I swim 50, 100, 200 free. So I'm not gonna train backstroke. That's not particularly mm -hmm. useful, but unless I'm like working different muscle groups or recovering or easing off my shoulders, like there's no, there's no use for me to swim fly. <laughs> it's a horrible sight for everybody, <laughs> uncomfortable for me. <laughs> Most people grow up learning how to swim, but when did it become something that you wanted to pursue is like you know joining club teams and and possibly doing in college i hated swimming when i was little i hated it so much my parents like i did the thing where they like throw the baby in the pool and then the baby just has to figure it out so eventually we figured it out um no I memory did... of that i'm sure oh <laughs> traumatized very, very similar. so my real quick my youngest son was kicked out of aqua babies because he was screaming so loud. It was bad. It was not good. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. So um, then in Arizona, everyone has a pool. So I did have to learn how to swim. And then in Arizona, everyone does rec summer swim. So I got into that. Fell in love with it. I remember I was six years old. I have a very vivid memory being in the car with my mom. And she was like, do you want to do this all the time? And I was like, yes. And then I started my club swimming the next day. <laughs> tricked you. She tricked you. Oh, yeah. She deceived you. You didn't know what you were getting into with the hour, like how early you have to wake up. My wife actually was a competitive swimmer in high school. Uh -huh. And she she doesn't miss that at all but she, I know she would get up at like five o'clock in the morning to go to swim practice before high school started mm -hmm. I don't know if that's how you all oh, had yeah. to do it as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> same Is in it? college <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, for me um my like origin story with swimming um I actually played soccer from when I was five until like junior year in high school um uh, and then my freshman year, I did high school, uh, high school swimming. And then I made the CIF team. Georgia and I actually went to high school together. And so we were on the same high school team, we went to CIF together and all that. But um, so I went to CIF my freshman year and then went to state for my sophomore year. And then I was like, maybe I should try swimming on a club team. So I did. And then I got recruited. So I'm like really really new to swimming comparatively because a lot of people start at like six years old so it, it's kind of yeah it's different for everybody yeah I started swimming when I was six actually <laughs> but I think it was more of a like I have an older brother and my parents were like oh we can just send them both to practice together and that'll be easier for us but I came Get from a swimming family for a little while <laughs> yes <laughs> definitely tire us out <laughs> 
it's kind of in but the yeah. genes because your dad your dad was a swimmer too right yeah my dad swam at ucla um and then he was a lifeguard afterwards so it was a big thing being ocean safe for us and then my mom swam in high school that was actually going to be my next point is do all swimmers become lifeguards at some point in their yeah. lives <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. that's what i was gonna say about my wife she's she was a lifeguard in high school and college it was just like her her job until you know she actually selected a career but it it's just yeah. i mean it pays like 18 dollars an hour you don't do anything <laughs> oh you save lives <laughs> Have you, never saved a life. either of you rarely uh, what was like your your craziest lifeguarding experience Oh my I feel gosh. like Isabel is traumatized right now. She definitely had to dive <laughs> into a pool after a two-year-old. There was this kid named Ryan. Oh, and, I know the story. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan thought it was a really good idea to stand on the edge of the pool and like jump backwards into the pool. We're like, Ryan, don't do that. Ryan's like, I'm going to do it. So Ryan keeps doing it. We're like, Ryan, don't do that. Then Ryan jumps into the pool. He misses, hits his chin on the side. Ooh. his teeth th go through oh, his uh, other teeth <laughs> it was so bad he was, was how not, old uh, like seven so oh. that'll follow him oh it was did <laughs> yeah. it i don't want to get too gory but it was just like a teeth <laughs> teeth oh. like did any yeah. teeth fall out here i did the 911 call i was <laughs> not gonna deal with the teeth <laughs> okay. Did you have to no. dive in the pool after some chiclets <laughs> that was my friend jake's job that was not <laughs> <laughs> I saw the look on Isabella's face when we talked about it. She just like went back there in her head and she's like, oh my goodness. Sorry yeah. for bringing up that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other lifeguarding stories before we move on? No. No, Claire so, and George are like, not us. Yeah. Too many. <laughs> I have one of myself where I needed to be saved. <laughs> I, um, I was in like high school swimming, I think, and they there was an empty light fixture in the pool that they hadn't um, put the light bulb back in. And I was doing a flip turn and my foot got caught inside of the metal oh, empty wow. light fixture. And when I kicked off the wall, I like shaved off the top of my foot. Ooh. <laughs> So that was a gnarly one where I had to get that. They put on like that powdery scab stuff for like yeah. synthetic scab that like bubbles there could have been two ways that went i thought you were gonna say you got shocked but that's the other way like getting cut or stuck you know yeah shocked would have been you know open bad. electrical of <laughs> fixtures in a pool not a good mix <laughs> oh. i feel like high school swim stories are just like when you have kids that are just like you know still learning it's i i tried to competitively swim a little bit in high school like I said, wasn't my thing. Yeah, high and, school swimming is, yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, um, I remember, and I was like a really skinny high school person. And I just didn't, I think this might've been the first time in my life I ever cramped and I had no idea what was happening to my leg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just kicking in the water and then all of a sudden I was like, my calf is going to explode. What is happening right now? Yes, but, which I'm uh, sure you've all dealt with. Yeah. I feel like high school swimming is a mix of people who are like, I want to learn how to swim. And people who are like on club teams going for yeah. like a cut. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> such a vast difference in lanes. Oh yeah. Well, I went to public um, high school. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say Claire and I, we actually had someone on our high school team who wasn't water safe and was learning how to swim. And like on a swim a, team, right? Wow. Yeah. So I'm going to throw my sister under the bus right here and she doesn't listen to this <laughs> podcast, so it's fine. My sister swam competitively in high school, my older sister, and she didn't know how to dive. So she wouldn't go up on the block. She would stand beside the block and jump into the pool and pretty much just belly flop into the pool. And it was kind of funny. I'm not seen so all those <laughs> <laughs> Let's transition to uh, how you wound up at Columbia. Uh, Claire, were you kind of like the lead recruiter on Georgia here? Or did that play a factor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She came out and visited me. I took her around and was like, you should come here. <laughs> we went to we went to high school together. We were in like the same, obviously, like level, like I was saying with the levels of high school. So, we were, so like we went to state together. Um, so we've known each other 
I don't know, since middle school, probably. Yes. And, um, so, I mean, she can, she can tell you if I recruited her, um, well, but I, I did push her. You got her there. You got her there. <laughs> you definitely did. I mean, I didn't even really want to go to Columbia. And then before I started talking to Diana and I loved her and I was like, okay, I'm going to take a visit. You know, I get to see Claire. So it's worth it. I went to New York for less than 24 hours and just fell in love with it after Claire took me on a private tour, which was really nice. <laughs> and then she did a little more convincing. We'd go to the beach and we'd talk about like options, but after beach being in California, on California, I assume. Yeah. We would, I would come home for break or something and we would like go hash it all out and like, bro, no. <laughs> Yeah. So what I heard was Claire didn't do a great job of recruiting you at first. And then Diane, Diana actually got you interested. And then Claire sealed the deal. It was a, it was a combined effort. A circle moment. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to ask you, since you're from, since you're, and you're from Arizona, Isabella and uh, Georgia and Claire, you're both from California. When you did, had you been in a cold weather place for any long period of time before you got to Columbia? No. no based on all three reactions they didn't even have to say anything <laughs> definitely not so was it your first time seeing snow then when you were at columbia no no i can go for it but like i hadn't like lived in like frigid conditions <laughs> uh, frigid huh new york city frigid <laughs> well you know, i guess like... you're not moving to like minnesota or wisconsin <laughs> or anything like that but kyle you do in fairness you do get those like two weeks of like polar vortex below freezing temperatures and around this time of year and also especially when you're like it's I remember my freshman year there was it was a quite cold winter and um we had we switch off every year with the men who gets the early practice who gets who gets the 5 a.m and who gets the 7 a.m I guess that was early but who gets the earlier so um and we had 5 a.m or 5 30 a.m class and you're walking to, to sorry practice and you're walking to practice and the wind tunnels are just absurd. That's, that's so a New York City phone. thing. That's all. Yeah. It, it's, it's, I, would, yeah. I would check my phone. It would be like temperature, like two degrees, wind chill, like negative 19. And it's like 4 a.m. and it's dark in winter. But yeah, that was that was not something I was prepared for. But Well, the, the part that's got to be worse than going is then leaving when you, um, sh your hair's wet and you've got to leave uh, when it's zero degrees outside. Yeah, the frozen, the frozen hair is... <laughs> unfortunate but <laughs> i have heard some horror stories about ponytails falling off after freezing oh no is that true okay i actually also heard these horror stories where people are like your hair's gonna freeze and then if you just crack it it'll break off <laughs> we've tried it I don't, think, I don't think that happens. <laughs> you'd have to you'd have to like sit out in the cold for this to even begin to be possible i feel like for hours to actually have it freeze you know but yeah, definitely a lot of horror stories coming from coming from the West Coast. We're really doing a good job of recruiting more people to Columbia <laughs> from the West Coast. We're the really helping Diana. Here. We're really helping <laughs> Diana out right now. That's the tagline. <laughs> Diana is going to thank us so much for this podcast. Um, I want to ask you, you know, who for the three of you, you can all answer this individually who were like, who did you look up to as you were, you know, becoming a swimmer, going through high school, maybe even now your role models, whether they be your family members, people as close as that, or whether they be Olympians, you know, people that you wanted to be like, do you guys have anybody who like kind of served as your role model? Claire, start with you. Okay. Um, I honestly think that's a good question. Um, because I came into like the swimming world kind of late, I definitely didn't grow up with like Ah, Michael Phelps and Katie Ledecky like I know who these people are so like I I really was not like I didn't watch the swimming Olympics I didn't know a lot about kind of like the swimming world um and so I think that when I got to college it was really and still is honestly my teammates that I look up to most which is really exciting because the people you look up to are around you all the time so that's sick but like just kind of having these people like in the lane next to you that that are pushing you and you're pushing them and to be able to have this kind of mutual inspiration where you're also best friends is just like a really awesome environment. So I think that's the the biggest thing for me. Also just not wanting to, you don't want to let other people down and you, you're you working for yourself, but you're also working for them. And um, that's been like my biggest motivator. What about you, Isabella? 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, growing up swimming since I was little, I think like Claire, like you grow up with the people who make you better. And um, I think swimming is such an awesome opportunity to just like, you know, there are these people and they're all insane athletes, but we all love the same thing. And finding that kind of community, it just makes it so much easier to like have fun and push yourself. And I think like looking up to your friends and looking up to your teammates, it's such a great like, you know, environment to be in. And I think it makes everybody better, you know. Georgia? Um, yeah, I'm really excited to have that like collegiate team experience. But I think for me, um, I've had this one friend who I've swum with since I was eight. And like, we've taken turns, like who's faster, like for a season, who's slower. Or like, we went through a phase where we would tie to the hundredth of a second, even if we were in different heats every time we swum. So having someone you're that close to and like, it can push there's you, not a rivalry. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, rivalries, rivalries, I feel like always sometimes have like a, like a negative connotation to them, but they can be like, they're they can, just meaning like you have a rival or a rivalry. It's like a good thing. Sometimes you have a good relationship. Yeah. Well, don't get me wrong. Um, yeah. No one wants to lose, but <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're all losing to someone. Here. <laughs> yeah. So as, as some of you were being like, you started to get interested in Columbia, maybe this is more relevant to Claire since she's a junior. Uh, it was a, it was probably around the time that Katie Miley was competing in the 2016 <laughs> Summer Olympics. So did that, like, did, were you, maybe, maybe talk about that, Claire, since you're older, like, were you aware of that as you were being recruited to Columbia? I think, you, what were you, probably like a sophomore or junior in high school at that time? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, um, I was a sophomore. I remember that being a really big deal. Again, um, I like wasn't in, I wasn't, I wouldn't have, if someone asked me like, oh, are you a swimmer? I, up until my sophomore year or junior year in high school, I probably would have said that I played soccer and swim. And then my junior year, I quit soccer and started swimming. And then I kind of became like a swimmer. And um, so I, I wouldn't, I think that like, it was, I kind of came into having role models that are like famous athletes kind of later in life. And it's really interesting to kind of find these people where all of a sudden they're the same age as you or like, or like they're younger than you. <laughs> and then you're like, oh God. So you have these people who are significantly faster, um, who are your age or a few years younger that can still act as inspiration, which is um, pretty cool. Do any of you, I don't have any of you had the chance to uh, either meet and or talk to her in your time at Columbia? I'm not yes. sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually, um, she's, I don't know if it was Cortez. I don't know if you remember this, but were you around when she came and swam with us? Um, no, I wasn't. Yeah. I had a different experience. Yeah. So my freshman year, she swam with us. It was actually hilarious. <laughs> she was like, oh, we'll just do like a slow little warm up. Like, let's just do a few hundreds kick. And everyone's like, okay, sounds good. She's in like the lane next to me or two lanes away. And everyone is like, kicking like as fast as they can like three wide just, like, and she is a 25 ahead of everyone and like gets to the wall like totally not out of breath at all we all get to the wall we're like oh my god this is just like a you think you're like at a high level and then you're like wow this is a whole different ball game that's really, that's, that's really funny to hear what was your experience uh, Isabella um, kind of aside from Columbia, um, I had the opportunity to interview her for a piece I wrote for like a swimming magazine, which was really cool. It was about um, a charity foundation she was working for through Georgetown. It was really cool. And she's awesome. Talk a little bit about that, Isabel. I saw uh, on your, your bio that you had some stuff published. And where did your, your interest in writing begin? Um, I don't really think I had a choice with writing. Uh, it's kind of like swimming. It chooses you. Um, so I have been published in Swim Swim magazine about 20 times, um, just on different like human interests or creative pieces about swimming, which is super, super fun. Um, the interest definitely, um, came when I was little. I, my parents read to me every night. Um, and like, even before I could write myself, I would like tell my parents stories, like exactly how I wanted them to be told. And they would write all the words for me down. So I have these little books. And then definitely um, combining that with swimming my junior year of high school, I had the opportunity to 
right as a journalist for Swim Swam, and it's been super, super cool. So many fun experiences. Definitely a great blend of my two loves. What's What's one thing that you remember uh, from your Katie Miley interview? Like, was there like a funny moment that you that you shared or anything like that? You know, honestly, I think it was a lot cooler for me than for her. Well, I okay, <laughs> fair. <laughs> I was just kind of like a little bit starstruck and I've interviewed some really cool people for Swim Swam, but just knowing that there's kind of that Columbia connection, a little bit of, you know, history there definitely made me a little bit giddy, a little bit childlike. I think for me, the most um, inspirational thing for me is now how she's like, I, I aspire to be like her in the way that she um, has she has um, done so well athletically and now she's moving on to law school or I'm not sure has she already graduated law school but I think she just graduated yes now she just graduated law school you know what I mean of like it wasn't one or the other which I think when people think of athletics sometimes like oh you're an athlete so you're not like an academic you're not very much a student but I think that at at an Ivy League um like at Columbia it's so awesome to have this like Olympic example of someone who's found a way to do both which to so many people seems impossible and I think to me really opened up the door of like oh I can do both things I can I can be a great athlete and I can be a great student and I can like really like art and I can also be a jock and like you can kind of meld these identities that are usually kind of kept separate so I think that was one thing that kind of like really stood out to me about her as a person. <laughs> Georgia, I know you're just a freshman, so I don't know if you've had the chance to meet her or talk to her as uh, Isabella and Claire have, but do you want to, I don't know if you have anything to share. I actually, I met her my freshman year of high school at a pro series meet in Indianapolis, and I got a photo with her. <laughs> so <that was> fun. <laughs> and then um, you were sold on Columbia. Exactly. <laughs> and then I'm swimming on the team she trained at, the pro team, Team Elite in San Diego. I'm there right now, so I've heard a lot of great things about her. Oh, that's really, that's really neat. Has she, has she, uh, does she come back to visit that, that area once? I don't know if that's where she lives or anything, but no, no unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. She's in, uh, Is she in the background right now? Can we just put her on? <laughs> come on out. Come on. Well, that's another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so talk a little bit more about, you guys talked about the, you know, the team seems like it's very together and everything. Talk about some other aspects uh, what do you kind of miss most about being with them this year since we're in this weird remote environment? Start with you, Isabel. Yeah, um, I think just like, honestly, just seeing everyone's faces in person is so vastly different from seeing everyone's faces over Zoom. I mean, we're lucky enough to have great coaches who organize great team meetings for us every week. And like, we still get to have that bond and we're all good friends. So like we keep in touch anyway, but definitely like, I think the collective team atmosphere, like in the pool during practice is something that's very different. Like people are doing their own things right now, swimming. Like some people are swimming literally by themselves. I'm in a strange swimming <laughs> situation. Other people are swimming on their old club teams. And I mean, we're lucky that we're able to be in a sport where we don't have to necessarily like work, you know, like lacrosse, we don't have to throw the ball to each other, you know, but um, at the same time, just the atmosphere is so different when everyone's, you know, your best friend and you're all cheering each other on. Um, I think that's personally what I miss the most. Yeah. Claire, you want to add anything? Yeah. Um, like, like uh, Isabella said, it's so weird to call her Isabella because I don't call her that. But <laughs> like Isabella said, um, you don't have to call her Isabella. <laughs> okay. Like Fratez said. <laughs> Fratez. <laughs> Like Fritas said, um, we're all in different swimming situations. Like right now I've been, um, I'm in LA, LA, like um, Georgia is not, but I'm in LA and all the pools are shut down. And um, so I haven't been able to swim consistently. I went to Florida for a few weeks, but I haven't been able to swim consistently since Ivy's last year. So it's been 11 months to the day. And um, I've been training for a triathlon and I've been trying to find different ways to stay in shape. And now I think I have a good swimming situation coming up, which I'm knock on wood works out. But um, I like swimming aside in terms of the team, I really, really miss, you just have like this, this built in family of, you know, like um, I was going to live with uh, 
four other five other juniors this year in a suite and um like it's so fun you know you're all cooking together you're eating your meals together you're having movie nights you're having people over you go out together being in the city is so fun like going to museums and going to movies and um just kind of having that day-to-day like oh hey like you want to get lunch or <laughs> just like the stupid things I, I really miss um or like borrowing each other's clothes or just having this kind of like massive um family that um that's ingrained obviously like we find ways to stay in touch but you're not living together clearly but I think that for me it's just gonna make it so much better when it's back you know like when for my senior year I really hope I'm I'm hopeful that we're gonna be back on campus and like it, you just kind of like absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's just going to make it 20 times better. <laughs> Georgia, for you, it's obviously a little bit different getting thrown into the mix as a first year in this remote environment and everything. Uh, what's that been like and how have you been able to still be integrated uh, into the team? Um, well, we have a freshman group chat, so we talk pretty often. And a lot of us have met through like recruiting trips or just going to meet. So it's nice that I actually know people. And on my recruiting trip, I actually, um, I roomed with Isabella and her roommate. So (laughs) I still text my host pretty often. She's been talking me through sorority rush, which is happening right now. So you still have people to talk to, which is nice or ask questions. I wanted to ask, um, and I'm gonna have to bring up Mary Pruden's video when I ask this question, (laughs) but. (laughs) I was, I wanted to ask, you know, how do you um, stay in shape for swimming at home, especially, I mean, now it's a little easier um, for some, some where places, you, for, yeah. in some places, not everywhere, in some places like Georgia, who's actually able to swim right now. But if you're not able to swim right now, besides, you know, diving into a kiddie pool and pretending to swim and getting, <laughs> getting, uh, you know, social media viral, like Mary Pruden did, we interviewed her back over the summer in our last season of the broadcast. So that was that was pretty good to talk to her about that whole video. But how do you how do you stay in shape uh, for swimming in the you know in this environment, Isabella? Um, so I got really lucky. Um, came home in March, and pools in Arizona opened up in May. So I didn't have like the giant eleven month <laughs> window. I had like a three month window, but definitely during that time, um, I had to take up running. <laughs> it was <laughs> less than stellar, but definitely just kind of keeping your endurance up, you know, making sure that you're able to stay strong for a long period of time. Um, we're lucky that um, our athletic trainers um, and um, coaches gave us like an app called Bridge um, for our dry land, for our lift workouts. It's all um, consolidated into an app format. So we were able to still have access to that um, kind of body weight exercises that we were able to do. Um, while the pools were shut down. So that was really great. And it was kind of good because um, a lot of um, my friends were like doing the same thing. So we'd kind of like FaceTime bridge together and it was still a way to kind of keep the team atmosphere. Um, I have a lot of great swim friends at home. Arizona is beautiful for hiking during that time of year. So just kind of keeping your endurance, keeping your strength, keeping positive, <laughs> all goes into it. Anybody else have anything to add? Gibbs, do you want to take it? Sure. Um, <laughs> I did a lot of ocean swimming, which is yeah. terrifying <laughs> when you're by yourself, because usually there's like a big pack in the front and then a big pack in the back. And then sometimes you get stuck between the two and <laughs> it's horrible, but it's okay. Um, and then I did a lot of like Peloton biking. Yeah. Now, ocean swimming. <laughs> How far out are you in the ocean? Far. Are you ever, I could never. Are you ever worried about, I, I just have a yeah. shark fear, I guess. Um, you just close your eyes. You like sing to yourself. You try to distract yourself. <laughs> I, I how, to think about it. how do you, I, I don't understand. Wow. You're braver I than I had a crazy experience this summer ocean swimming. Um, I, I think I told you guys about this already. <laughs> I was so excited. So I went, um, I did a lot of ocean swimming too, to stay in shape. Like, yeah, you have to find some endurance to do and then some strength work. And so I was running. Some bravery. 
and some bravery. <laughs> a little bit of bravery. So <laughs> I, I went on this ocean swim and all of a sudden I saw like these dolphins and I was like, oh my God, dolphins, like I'm going to go say hi. So I swam out to them and there was like a mom and her baby. And I was like, it was really cool. And then two more came up and then two more and then two more. And all of a sudden I was surrounded by a circle of 25 dolphins. We swam south together for 20 minutes. They stayed by me like on the surface of the water so that I could see their eyes. And they would like come up under me and they were doing their little like eh, screeching underwater. It was like a surreal moment. It was, I, like, I cried. It was the worst <laughs> <one ever. laughs> I was like, yeah, this is happening right now. Yeah, it was, it was. And nobody else is with you while this is going on. No, and then the funny part, I got out of the water and was like running back to my car. And this woman was like, excuse me, excuse me. And I was like, yes. And she's like, was that you with the dolphins? And I was like, yeah, it was so cool. And she's like, are you their trainer? I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Yeah, we're this training dolphins in the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, those are wild dolphins. <laughs> That's amazing. I. I don't, I, I don't know if either of you can top that, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we found our plug for the podcast. Yeah, there we go. I know. That'd be, I mean, obviously you can't have a video of that unless you knew that was going to happen and you brought some like waterproof phone with you. But I, I was just picturing, you said you cried. I'm just like picturing you swimming and just like <laughs> tears coming down your face. So as you're Actually, I went back um, like every day after that for a few weeks and um they would come back all the time and um i had this one time where i was swimming and they can get like they can swim up to 35 miles per hour and so wow. what they do is they charge and then split and so i was i was swimming in like pretty shallow water like i couldn't stand but it wasn't like a half a mile out and so um i was swimming and um i saw these two dolphins coming towards me and I went underwater and I had my goggles on and they charged me and split. And I was like, oh my God, this is so scary. <laughs> it's like being hit by a car. Yeah, really, that would, uh, that would, I don't, that wouldn't have ended well. I, although, you know, I'm sure the dolphins know. The dolphins don't want to hit you either, right? No, I think it's like a mutual, we're mutually curious about each other, you know? I like to think there's a relationship that's being built. <laughs> Isabella, Georgia, have you swam with dolphins in the wild before? Yes. <laughs> oh nice. please, surprise <laughs> please do tell oh okay like fake dolphins but dolphin-esque um so <laughs> please stay you know no, what no, no, we're no, gonna listen. take a break we're gonna use that as a teaser we're gonna take a break <laughs> and when we come back we're gonna let you know what isabella means by that <laughs> at athletic brewing company we've built america's first craft non-alcoholic brewery we've created a lineup of award-winning non-alcoholic beers our beers are made with organic grains and start at only 50 calories athletic beers are perfect for anyone who loves being healthy and active but also loves to enjoy a great tasting beer with friends to give us a try go to athleticbrewingcompany.com and use code athletic20 for 20 percent off your first order we all know what comes with being a fan, the ups, the downs, and everything in between. Share a Coke with a friend. Coca-Cola, the official beverage of the Columbia Lions. We take care of the whole recovery process, getting them back to the level they were before they got injured, and many times even better. What's involved is preserving dreams. The first thing I do with any athlete is figure out their goals and then try to make a plan based upon that. One of the things that people don't quite understand about team physicians is how invested we are in these people's lives. We don't look at you as a guy with a shoulder problem. We try to understand what it is that makes you tick. We're back. Isabella teased us by letting us know she swam with wild fake dolphins. And we're going to know what she means by that. <laughs> OK, so um, every year I have this really cool opportunity um, to swim from Alcatraz to San Francisco. Um, and then from one end of the Golden Gate Bridge to the other. Um, it's for the Foundation uh, for Aquatic Safety and Training based out of Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I have done these swims ever since. I think I did my first one when I was 10 years old. Um, so I've done it every year since. <laughs> oh, yeah. How far are you swimming? Yeah, that's what I want to know. <laughs> it's like it's a not... mile and a half. It's not okay. as long as it seems. But a mile and a half swim is not a mile and a half walk. No, especially in rough water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, so I think I was like 13 or 14 and there were these porpoise creatures <laughs> that looked like dolphins. But when we asked if they were dolphins, um, there are all these people like in um, canoes, like swimming alongside the people in, or rowing alongside the people in the water. So like to make sure we're safe. And I like pop out, I was like, is that a dolphin? Like, oh my goodness. Like, this is the coolest thing ever. It was right next to me. I was so excited. And then the person in the boat was like, no, that's a porpoise. Like, that's the same thing. It was but... a shark and they didn't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. It was like, not as cool as Claire, but one of the coolest things that's happened to me. And then Claire told her story and you were like, well, I guess. <laughs> then it doesn't even count. <laughs> I didn't cry or anything. I don't know. It wasn't as majestic. Was it like a spiritual awakening? No. <laughs> kind of disappointing. <laughs> Georgia, what about you? Can you um, top I it? Just, I definitely cannot top it. But I remember being terrified. I was at, I was doing an ocean swim with my friends and we like stopped for a second because we were all scared. I didn't so realize how regroup. common I didn't realize how common ocean swims were until this conversation, right? Now. <laughs> yeah. Continue. Well, um, uh, junior guards. So a lot of kids do junior guards, where it's like trained to be an ocean lifeguard. So you do swims. Okay. Um, so Not for me. <laughs> we're there. We're in the water. We're regrouping, and I turn around, and there is a dolphin face right next to me. And when you see like a dolphin face, you don't know if it's a shark. You don't know if it's a dolphin. <laughs> like you just look into its eyes, and I swam as fast as I could away from it and yeah it's terrifying and not the majestic experience no. we've had three very different experiences here we've we've hit all ends of the tree I did have an experience with an eagle ray once I was in Mexico and I was swimming in this um is that like a stingray ray? yes and okay. I was doing an ocean swim hanging out and um this is one of like I wasn't totally comfortable with ocean swims yet and so I have this weird thing where it's like when you're on the top of the water like you can't see anything. You don't know what's down there. There are so many little eyes looking up at you. And I just like think about the eyes and I get so scared. <laughs> but anyway, I was having this moment where I was just thinking about all the eyes and um, swimming along. And all of a sudden this eagle ray, which is like six foot wingspan um, and they're dark blue with these iridescent spots. They're absolutely beautiful. Just swims up underneath me and then like dives back into the darkness. And I was like, oh my God, they have like a four foot stinger stinger oh, this, oh. Uh, they were they're so cool though it was awesome you are all much braver than me and kyle <laughs> no <laughs> all I'm gonna i was say. getting anxiety listening to her tell the story just now <laughs> like my heart was pounding out of my chest sorry go no, no. so kind of switching gears what's the longest you've each of you have, have swam what's the longest distance in one one shot um, we do like really long practices. Like I've had like a, a 10K practice before. Um, but in terms of like open water, I've done a damned river swim that was like, um, I think like two hours. Um, but our practices every day are two to two and a half hours. I, with the training program I'm starting up next week, I have a three hour practice on Monday nights. I'm not looking forward to that. So yeah, I'd say like, I wouldn't say like, I could just off the top of my head be like, I've done five miles, but like a 10 K um, in a practice is like a lot. Um, yeah. um, we used to do swimathons on my old team when I was younger. So I don't know exactly how much we'd swim because we were little and slow, but pretty much you just nonstop swim. You just go it's until like you can carry go it. Yeah. yeah. So you have like so many laps. Now we're going laps you do. That's like a, like a fun, like a fundraiser type deal. That's mm -hmm. really cool. That's a cool idea. No, it's, it's no, not. It's, not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool idea for, uh, parents for, to give their kids, for parents to give their kids here, go wear yourself out. <laughs> Swim as far as you can. <laughs> Somebody will come get you if you get too tired. Have I, if any of you guys like swam, uh, like like uh, open, like done some kind of open water swimming, kind of like I don't, you know, Is Isabella or Fr Fritez, right? Fritez. I know. I say <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> We've become so close in this we have, five this minutes. Week. We're we just gonna have, go by nicknames have, now. Have, <laughs> okay. Mike, change your name on the screen, Mike. It's. <laughs> Have either of you, like, what's like the coolest like open water thing that you've done? And maybe you have one that's better, Isabella. I don't, but. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't know if anything tops that. 
I know. Um, the Alcantara's Golden Gate swims are honestly one of the highlights of like my whole life. Um, doing that is just the coolest thing ever, but only fake dolphins. No, no <laughs> exciting dolphins. <laughs> any, uh, any triathlons in anybody's future? You've got, you've got one of the three legs down, you know, you can swim. <laughs> yeah. I've, um, like I said, I've been training for a triathlon. I did a triathlon relay with a few friends, um, uh, up in Malibu, the Zuma triathlon a couple of years back. And then um, I recently, I've been getting really into it because I haven't been able to swim. So I've been, I got um, some clips for my birthday and um, I'm, I've been biking a lot. And like, I used to be the kind of person that was like, oh, like I have to bike to the grocery store. Like, no. And now I'm like 30 mile bike ride. Let's do it. And so um, I really want to do an Ironman someday. Um, that, that's like, there's a lot between me and that day, but I hope it happens. <laughs> I remind me of all the details of an Ironman. So an Ironman is a 2.2, I want to say mile swim, which is the easy part. And then there's 112 mile bike ride and then a um, marathon. So 26.6 mile run. <laughs> just just top uh, it up the marathon. Just, uh, you know, finish it off with a nice, easy marathon at exactly. the end. There. <laughs> You know, I was about, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't, it's an embarrassing <laughs> question. I was about to ask my wife, when you said Iron Man uh, event, I was like, I think my wife's dad is, nope, no, he definitely has not. <laughs> <laughs> he's done, he's done triathlons. I know that. And, and he's done like half marathons, but no. Okay. I know the answer. <laughs> so let's go back. Let's go back to like indoor pool swimming outside of, this is just a fun question to kind of try to close things up a little bit outside of Eurus, what's your favorite pool to swim in my home pool i yeah, love it it's pool. perfect amazing at your, I, at your house or you're talking about one that you swim at? oh no <laughs> love like, pool at home. house pool is so yeah. far but <laughs> yeah i was gonna say wow like wow that's impressive wow. Yeah, wow. you got like a 100 meter pool sitting in your backyard that's that's cool <laughs> Yeah, my my pool at home, I swim at um, Pali High in LA, and it's right on top of this mountain, and um, the sunsets are beautiful because the ocean's right there, and so after practice, sometimes we just, like, run down to the beach and, like, go hang out, and so it's, like, such an ideal location. Also, Eurus, I don't know if you guys have ever been there. It's four floors underground. Claire, yep. come on, Claire. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're talking to the people listening to this podcast, oh, not the people <laughs> hosting the podcast. this podcast. <laughs> to our listeners, don't know if you've ever been to Eurus, but okay. it's four floors underground with very poor ventilation. So the three of us come from the West Coast where you only swim outdoors. So going into that was a, a rough adjustment to be sure. Ventilation's probably a little better now. My, taking a wild guess on that one. <laughs> Yeah, I've never swum indoors before. So that's going to be an adjustment. Wow. But I drive. Never swim indoors? Even or like consistently. Yeah. Never consistently say, swum okay. indoors. Okay. That's, I think we've, I think we've kind of hit our, hit our time limit here. Not that we really have a time limit, but we've hit a solid mark with the women's swimming and diving program. Uh, Claire Larson, Fertez, and uh, Georgia Young. <laughs> <laughs> I roll Kyle. <laughs> only me. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Claire Larson, Isabella Fratezzi, and uh, Georgia Young. Uh, I'm not going to edit it out though. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Uh, really interesting conversation with the three of you, and we're really glad to have had the three of you on. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's been fun. This was a lot of thank fun. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the semester. Hopefully, we'll see you back on campus soon. So for Kyle Matrician, I'm Mike Kowalski. This has been the Roarcast presented by JAG1 Physical Therapy. Uh, you'll see us again next Monday right here, 10 a.m. on Twitch. Uh, catch up on previous episodes by checking out Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, search for Columbia Athletics. Hit the subscribe button. Leave us some comments. So uh, until next week. We'll talk, until know. next week. Until next we'll week. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>